Hello there, gentlemen, and welcome back to Cape Breton. Welcome aboard our glorious island. It's been quite a while since I have checked the issues of my nation. I was uh, quite busy moving back to Cape Breton from my visit to family in England. But here I am, and let's get straight back into it. Wedlock worries. Oh, no, not women being whores. No, not at all. After a recent article in the Salutations magazine... Uh, it highlighted a growing trend in arranged marriages throughout Cape Breton. Several civil rights protesters have camped outside your parliament demanding changes to the law. Why? Nothing wrong with uh, arranged marriages. Arranged marriages are more likely to succeed. Uh, as opposed to ones where you're legally allowed to leave them. Just look at the Middle East. Like, What's the divorce rate in Saudi Arabia? Where women are not allowed to leave their partners under fear of death. Arranged marriages are the way forward if you want to lower divorce rates. Entirely. This can't go on, exclaims Barbie Wessex, a long-time campaigner for the rights of single young women. Oh, so she's a whore. Right now, there's nothing to stop my parents marrying me off to anyone they please. Yes, they should sell you for a profit. Who'd have thought? Surely it ought to be the sole decision of the individual as to who they spend the rest of their life with. If the individual is a man, sure. You can't just force two people together and expect it to work. Arranged marriages must be banned. Ah, this woman's clearly gone do lally, thinking she has equality and such. I only want what's best for my daughter, argues Cyril Duckworth, father of three. She's young, far too young to know what's good for her. Every day, when I look in the newspaper, I learn of another unwanted teen pregnancy of poor, sad adolescents who have gone down the slippery slope of drugs and violence. If parents have the power to arrange marriages with other respectable, wealthy families, then it helps set the foundations for our children to have a decent life. I propose that all marriages should be arranged by the parents of the families. It's the best way. Yes, Mr. Cyril Duckworth, you are a very smart man. That's crazy, says Felipe de Vries, your Minister of Domestic Affairs. Everyone knows that the people who screw your life up the most are your parents. Wait, what? This man is clearly crazy. And now you consider letting him decide who you marry? I think we, the government, should arrange all marriages by national census. Ah, maybe he's not crazy at all. Distribute everyone to a place and person in an economically stimulating way. This sounds a lot like communism, isn't it? Is that communism? Ah, it's just the ultimate socialism. <laughs> state state enforced monogamy, is that the word? <laughs> We'd solve the uh, housing problem just like that, especially if we dismiss out moded things like divorce and monogamy. This could be a golden opportunity for us. <laughs> oh, honestly. I think, I think, uh... Arranged marriages are the way forward, but by the parents, not the states. This is a libertarian nation. If we have the states arranging all these things and eugenics, it'd, it'd get out of hand. So I think we're just going to stick with uh, the parents arranging the marriages here. Children are regularly married to each other to secure alliances between families. Good. Apparently tourism has gone up because of it. Very, very good. I am so happy. See, crime is down, youth rebelliousness is down. Yeah, yeah, I figured it the right thing there. Short shorts to short. Dress codes for young women are in the news again after a violent clash between parents on opposite sides of the issue. The ringleaders have been dragged into your office by your Minister of Education for an impromptu arbitration and time out. My daughter was sent home from her school because of her shorts, exclaims Bella Ripley, mother of two young teenage girls who look more like college students clearly a single mother. They said that her clothing was distracting the boys and lowering grades. What a bunch of sexist nonsense. Why are you people so fixated with what girls wear? These weak-minded boys need to learn some self-control before they enter the workforce. 
<sighs> no, the uh, the devil put women on this planet to distract men from achieving goodness in the world. That's the only reason women exist. They don't exist for reproduction. They are a distraction placed on the planet by the devil. So when you allow these women to wear their short shorts in schools and distract the males from their learning, you're making the world a worse place. Pedro Jimo, red-faced father of two sons, approaches your desk while your guards eye him cautiously. Her dang daughter was wearing shorts, so short you could see her gosh darn gluteal fold. If she dressed like that downtown, she'd be attacked. You need to ban these shorts for the good of the youth of Cape Breton. Ah, uh, I don't know about banning them. I mean, older women should be allowed when they're out on the prowl for a man to sugar daddy for them. This God-fearing man is right, but we need to go even further, says angry street preacher Minerva Fellow, who was not even invited to this meeting. <laughs> We must make all women cover up from wrist to the ankle. In fact, to reduce temptation, we should just issue proper uniforms for everyone. Those who disobey the dress code should face public trial and shaming. There's lots of, uh... There's <laughs> not. Uh... Finally, 15-year-old Vera sits down at your desk, barely looking at you while she types vigorously on her smartphone. Jeez, like, get off my back. I can, like, wear whatever I want. Boys are so stupid at some times. Look at these shirts. They are even patriotic. She stands up and does a twirl to show her short shorts are in your national colours with Cape Breton emblazoned across the backside. Pretty nice, right? She smacks her gum loudly, takes a selfie and goes back to texting. Uh, seriously, this is not the sort of culture we should be um, entertaining. This this backward culture of basically being a whore is, is just going to drag down our nation. We should... Uh, what should we do? Uh, this guy wants to ban shorts. Oh, this 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 person's quite Islamic. We don't want to go that far. Uh, but then again, we we shouldn't be fixated on what young girls wear. You shouldn't at all. Uh, it's just. But then there is a lot of sexualization of young children these days in the media. Just look at Hollywood and all the shit they're pushing. It's far too much sexualization. There's 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 band shorts. Why the hell not? Teenage girls in knee-length sh uh, for shorts have been a cultural icon of Cape Breton. Yeah, they should be. Yes, teenage girls in knee-length surfer shorts have become a cultural icon. Good. Everything should be down to about the knee. Why is it all the way up here? It's basically just underwear. Ah, be we became more radical and authoritarianism. Authoritarianism. And our drug use went down, nudity went down for a fair bit. Oh, that's a shame. Intelligence went down, why? What is this nonsense? Ministers exposing themselves. <laughs> in what way? It was recently discovered that your finance minister owns several properties in Marsh Noir, and your defence minister has stocks in Mexitopian arms manufacturing companies. Concern has been raised that this information was not disclosed before the previous election, and now represents a conflict of interest for both ministers. You have to admit, this looks incredibly corrupt, states your long-suffering deputy defence minister. How do we know that they're not creating policies, particularly in the era area of foreign affairs, to line the pockets of their cronies. The Maxitopian government is notoriously corrupt, and everyone knows that Marche Noir is riddled with East Lubeckan spies. If we want to maintain public trust, we're going to have to come down hard on these two for the sake of our government's reputation. The ministers must resign. I don't know. We'll have to see what the others say. That simply doesn't go far enough, adds government watchdog Michelle Norris, whose most recent crusade forced the entire government to switch from four-ply to one-ply toilet paper. Oh, shh. You don't want to go to thin toilet paper. Anyone running for political office must disclose all of their financial assets to the authorities for rigorous investigation prior to their nomination. Uh, 
That's where potential conflicts of interest can be avoided before a scandal happens. If they have any assets overseas, they must sell them off before accepting nomination. It's the best way to keep a government safe and free of corruption. Okay, I, I agree with you have to know about... They should disclose where they're being paid for. It's like when you get a politician running for a position like, say, Hillary running for US president a couple of years ago. These people are so corrupt and bribed for by foreign nations, you need to know who is paying for them before you let them into power. But whereas making them sell off all foreign assets is a bit much, I don't believe you should be forced to sell off all your foreign assets. Aren't you jumping a gun a little here, replies your finance minister, after discreetly, discreetly blotting out the address of her mansion on an expense report. Just because I own lots of property overseas does not mean I'm susceptible to blackmail or leaving confidential documents unprotected. This feels more like a punishment for being wealthy, brought on by the jealous critics who wish they were as successful as me. Why should that prevent me from running? Don't you want the best people for the job? Yeah, I'm just gonna go with this, quite honestly. Ah, well, too bad. They know what we have for breakfast. Oh well, that's just a rumor anyway. We all know fake news. A midsummer night's snooze fest. Who's that? Is that Jimmy Savile? As legions of interns scramble to set up a stage in your office, your Minister of Phaetics dramatically announces that her ministry has organized a play for you. The play purportedly tells a tragic story. The public apathy towards the long dead but highly influential Capitonian playwright Bill Wakes Wad. I doff be the poet himself. Minister Porkett announces, wearing purple robes and a long wig. Once upon a merry time, we, my plays, amaze those large and small. Now there's only one way to ensure Cape Breton remains in my frowl. Force my works upon the children. Make them read it all. It may be true that the language doth be a few centuries old, but what is in a word? That which we call a wood-eating spike ball by any other name would just be a wood-eating. I don't get it. An intern, apparently playing the part of an enthusiastic teenager, pokes the minister with a smartphone, causing him to crumble to the floor in mock agony. The intern robotically states, Alas, poor Wake's word, I knew him well. I would have surely been willing to get interested in Wake's word if his word choice was easier. If only we could rework Wake's word so it appealed to me, a disaffected teenager, and my social media habits. Nah, fuck you and your social media habits. All the world stage, leader, and it doth be time we saw some plays, announces overconfident actor Rick Rea, dressed in a donkey costume and accidentally stepping on the dead minister. As I, one of the greatest actors of all time, should know if, the best way to spread the brilliance of Wake's word is to fund school drama clubs and ye old outdoor theatre. If we can coerce these apathetic adolescents, these indifferent infants, these bored brats to act, they sh will surely see the value of true literature. No, I'm not exactly uh, against what you're saying there. Kaboom! The wall of your office suddenly explodes, spewing fire and smoke everywhere. As the smoke clears, explosives, enthusiasts, and the director of transmorphers and adolescent monster samurai frogs, Michael Cove strolls in, a second explosion obliterating the minister stage. This wakes word guy, eh. His plays are older than my exes. What you need, my friend, are explosion-packed science fiction movies in the curriculum that will leave kids drooling over science and computers. The future is where the money is. The past, who cares? Another one of your walls ex oh, another one of your walls explodes, and he grins manically as your office burns around him. Fuck yeah, we're going with this guy. Chrome-clad space marines are such stuff that dreams are made on. Yes. Look at everything going up all the way. 
Fuck yeah. Last issue of the day. Is our children learning? Are our children learning? Is our children learning? I... When a relatively minor official in your government vowed to increase the standard of education in Cape Breton, the press came knocking on your door to ask how this mighty might actually be done. It's all a question of money, says veteran teacher Kefe Olio Quinn. If we really care about education, we'll make it our number one priority. Boost the education budget, half the student-teacher ratio, and make sure every teacher has a master's degree in education. After all, the children are our future. As much as I'd like to have more money, it's really a question of most of the faculty belonging to one of the most powerful unions in the whole of Cape Breton. That stops this school from being great, says Principal Prudence Wong. Prudence Wong. Prove us wrong. Oh. I can't discover which teachers are good and reward them for their excellent work, nor fire the useless ones. Destroying teachers' unions is perhaps the most important thing we could do. Yes, let's destroy unions. Unions are just terrible. They are communism. We must remove them at once. I think enforced specialization is the way to go, says your defence minister, standing arm in arm with a bishop of a major religion and Cape Breton's top CEO. Specialization lets each focus on what they're truly good at, and I'm sure the religious institutions, the military and the private companies would fork out quite a bit to train the next generation. I like this idea. Kids are too stupid to know what they're going to be good at in the future. Here, ask a 16-year-old what they want to have a career in. Is that, I don't know. If we force them into training from an early age, conscription, whatever, and had the uh, businessmen in the empires of industry pay for it, ah, that's the way. As we've proven in the past, the free market can manage this far better than the public sector, says market analyst Zach Duterte. Now, I'm not saying that the state shouldn't help people go to school. Far from it. Still, schools need greater freedom to maximize learnedness, to set their own tuition, salaries, curricula, etc. Give private schools a small government subsidy and let the free market take its course. So what if a few poor kids drop out earlier? You can't make omelets without breaking a few eggs. I'm going to go with this. The state believes that children are what you make of them. Yes! Streets are cleaner and less dangerous because of it. Religiousness is up, authoritarianism, safety, ignorance. Ah, what's down there? Obesity is down, which is a very positive thing. Ah, oh, any other? Ah, crime is down 7%. Brilliant. Intelligence is taking fucking drop today. Secularism is down. Recreational drug use, lifespan. Ah, whatever. Anyway, let's uh, let's check out our nation here. Look at this glorious, glorious nation. I haven't played in seven days. Oh no, I haven't played in fucking eleven days. Holy shit, I've been busy. And like I said, I was moving uh, back to Cape Breton after my English trip. Holy fuck, look at us dying. Government spending, defence 48.4, education, all this other shit. Oh well. Well, thank you for watching this episode. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to show your support, there is a Patreon link down below. And there is a Discord server where you're more than welcome to join us socially. I'll see you guys there. Goodbye.